uh, another patient, uh, <coughs> we have uh, um, anterior maxillary excess. So, and lo look at her, she has beautiful eyes, excellent nose, uh, very good support for her cheeks, right there. Uh, ang this angle is gorgeous, you know, I like this, she has very nice lips. Uh, she has a mandible that is retrusive, and she can't close her lips when she closes her lips. And that's her bite. Uh, she has open bite, uh, and it's uh, class two-ish right there. So uh, this is this is pretty good. There's quite a bit of advancement we can do here. But those are difficult, too, because I don't have spaces here. So I had to do uh, one piece of work. I couldn't. Uh, I, I decided not to risk, you know, and uh, uh, divide the jaw in between here because I, I could give her a little bit better over jet, uh, but I didn't want to <coughs> cut her joint between the teeth or spacing work too tight. So when she does this, uh, this is her over jet, and we can see that her incisor is actually in front of the clavella quite a bit, and she has excessive upper jaw. So this is a true vertical upper jaw deformity. Uh, she's relatively symmetric. Uh, her one eye is higher than this eye. So I mark them like this uh, when they have a, a situation where we have really have to plan precise. We put all those dots and markers and uh, uh, she's in the splint. That's how she goes to the CT scan. So when she, that's what she cannot do. You see, she has lips like this nice lips, but she can't bring them forward, she gets this. So that's not acceptable. So how do you treat that? It's a combination problem. So when she smiles, she has vertical maxillary excess, maxilla has to go up. That's her profile right there. Airway small. Again, we're not gonna, go, uh, you know, if you look at her SNA, it's, it's really off. Uh, which you know can correlate to that thing, uh, and uh, S and B is normal, so her mandible is normal. Well, I don't think so, but the uh, uh, cranial angles say it's normal. Uh, so the insurance doesn't want to pay for the mandible surgery, and we have to you know convince them to do that. So that's when challenges come. You know they they treat the different things, but that's what we plan for the patient. And uh, that's where we want to go. So we want to close her lips to give her a nice profile. And uh, we don't treat those angles. That's how she looks after surgery. So those big lips get bigger. Yeah. Yep. And, he, and you're going to say, Dr. Antipov, you didn't move her lower jaw at all. But she's just very small. You know, just very small. Okay, and, and, and that's how she looks uh, today. She actually came today, um, and uh, that's how she looks like. So she's, uh, we did her surgery last, uh, she's two weeks uh, today. So that's how patient looks in, in two weeks, and uh, that's before and that's after, and that's her skeletal change. So we actually did a lot of uh, advancement. We didn't move here a lot, but we did, Impaction and that brought the lower jaw forward quite a bit. So what did we do? We moved the upper jaw forward and we lengthened that third right there. And that's pretty much it. So, yeah. Thank you. so what, what's interesting about this is that you know we're going to look at the faces and we're going to recognize the formulas and uh, uh, we're going to select the orthodontic cases. Uh, that are uh, easy, you know, and if there's, a, you know, female, young female, uh, then... Uh, okay, and thank you for coming. If you have any questions, if somebody wants to uh, get a scan done here with us, you know, we can easily do it, you know, to look at the air some, some <laughs> mm -hmm. Did everyone have a chance to sign in? And then I have everyone certificates here before you leave. Very yeah. impressive. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Something new. Absolutely. I think I should go into depth with this. I don't know.